Hello. You didn't have to clap, you just had to say hi. I'll do it. There we go, lovely. Cool, is that working? I think we just need to switch it over to the, uh, the laptop, that's all right. There we go. Uh, before I start, I wanted to thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Ivana. Thank you, Alex Alexandra. Uh, and uh, thank you for putting me uh, after him. <laughs> that really fucked me, to be honest. So, well done. He was amazing. Really, genuinely great. So, I'm going to seem like the conservative American, which, you know, sucks, but that's cool. My name's Chad. Uh, I come from McCann, London. Uh, I'm going to show some work today around uh, how we think about reinventing ideas uh, and some of the stuff that we've been doing in McCann. Uh, equally, I'm going to show some work uh, from an agency that I worked at before called CHI and Partners in London, one of the most incredible independent agencies still left in London. Uh, and I love them. Uh, not as much as McCann, of course. They suck in comparison to McCann London. But, um, uh, but you know, I still love them. Uh, I was born an American, uh, so uh, that's not my fault, but I'm continuing to uh, run from it as fast as I can. I lived in New York. I live in London now. I've been living in London for about 10 years. Uh, I love London. Uh, and I'm uh, currently visiting Belgrade, uh, if you haven't noticed that. So uh, one of the things I guess to get to know about me is uh, my kryptonite is the idea of somebody saying that's, that's kind of good enough. Uh, that kind of drives me a bit crazy. I'm a bit fear, I have a lot of fear, and, uh, and I'm, I'm just quite scared of the idea of not reaching potential. Whether it's mine, or if it's our clients, if it's the brief that we're getting, the creative that we're getting, it just completely devastates me all the time when you feel like we don't do that. Um, that being said, I'm positive. I'm really proud of things. I'm proud of uh, having the fear of not potential. I'm proud of, and I'm sorry about this, but uh, this kind of global fact, which is slightly annoying for most of you, that I create extremely beautiful children. Uh, this is my daughter. Uh, it's my, this is my son. I mean, he's just absolutely stunning, as you know. This is what they look like together. Uh, and I know, I know, I know it's, a, it's, it's crazy, and I'm sorry about that, but, you know, they're kids, and they're beautiful, and I'm really good at that. Um, I also love creativity. I specifically like creativity and using it to build brands and specifically to sell products. I like selling actual products. So I like awards, they're really cool. Uh, but there's something really nice about actually doing your job and doing work that works too. It's kind of a silly thing and I think sometimes we get a bit distracted with that. Um, and I think the last thing really about me is I have an obsession with changing everything. I don't know why, it, but it's, I think that we're in a time in advertising where it feels like there's a need to change it. We're kind of looking backwards. We're not looking forwards enough. There's so many new channels. There's so many new opportunities for us to do incredible things. And yet, it doesn't feel like we're really obsessed with changing it all. Uh, and I think so. I mean, changing everything is kind of a weakness in many ways, but it's your biggest strength uh, in, in other ways. So, what I'd like to talk about is how changing every, everything is really starting to be kind of the new definition of what creativity is. And I think, you know, we really need to, to look at that definition quite clearly. Obviously, there are really great ideas on how we engage people through new platforms. But just inherently, how we're, th how we're thinking about the idea of what creativity is in the context of advertising and marketing. And I think that definition is about constant, constant reinvention. Uh, and almost just feeling like it never changed, it's never the same. We're always kind of trying to find the next thing. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a bit of reinventing and really kind of trying to have a healthy obsession about it. Uh, I also want to be really clear that the work that I'm going to show is work of many people. That, uh, you know, it's, it's a real honor and a gift to be able to sit up and talk about work. But the reality is, is that it represents so many people uh, that have done this kind of work and done this work together and, and it's about the team it's not about one individual so I just want to make sure that everybody knows that there are millions of people behind not millions of people there, there are literally hundreds of people behind behind the work that I'm going to show uh, so I speak for those many I was going to show three ideas uh, but three is kind of lame so I'm going to go for four uh, I'm going to be super ambitious which is good uh, and I'm going to start with uh, the first one because that makes sense everybody with me still good yeah we can say yes. yes. 
Louder. Yes. Oh, God. Come on, guys. All right. So uh, this one's from my previous life at CHI and Partners, uh, which I mentioned before. It's a great agency, but not as good as McCann London. Um, and uh, it, this is really about reinventing television or specifically TV idents. Uh, it was for a brand. The brief was for a brand called Talk Talk. And Talk Talk really was kind of a low-cost, broadband TV phone provider. Uh, great brand, and they really believed in a brighter home for everyone. And that was the, kind of the way that they looked at the world. And they were sponsoring The X Factor. Is everybody familiar with The X Factor? Okay, everybody's like, good. That was getting a bit louder. That more exciting. I think we're getting there together. Um, X Factor, you know, as you know, is about kind of everyday people getting their moment in the spotlight, right? And specifically around music and really just kind of tapping into everybody's love for performance, being on stage. You know, I mean, I, I, do, I do dislike myself a lot, but I do enjoy the idea of being on stage. So we're all human, and we like to have our little couple moments of fame. Uh, so in the UK, just for a little context, there is, when you sponsor somebody, you have to do these things called TV idents. And idents are essentially 10-second TV spots. They're really short, they're really succinct. You can't do any call to action. You can't really show a lot of product. You can't say anything besides, like, talk, talk, you know, sponsors the X Factor, and, and it's really quite restricted. Those 10-second idents, they, pay, play, they play right before the commercial break and right after the commercial break. I don't know if you guys have them here in Serbia, but in the UK, they're a huge thing. Uh, in the US, they don't have them. So now, idents, so we're doing idents. We're doing these little 10-second commercial breaks. And historically, brands have done this uh, really for the audience. I mean, not for the audience, but for the brand. They're really kind of quite self-centered about it, to be quite frank. Uh, they're never doing anything that's really connected to the brand, I mean, to the, to the show. Um, so our ambition was essentially to put uh, the audience, the people that are watching this thing, at the heart of the idea, uh, and to really reinvent these kind of TV ideas, idents. So the idea is that uh, we kind of created an easy way to let people star uh, in these idents. And uh, we gave it a name. It's called Mixoff. And essentially, Mixoff were allowed you to create stunning HD, broadcast, broadcastable-ready TV spots that could star you and three other people, and it would do it really easily. You could use your mobile, you could use your tablet, you could do it from your laptop on the website. You, choo you chose from nine different tracks that you'd lip sync a song over. You could do eight different video styles that would map your video of you lip syncing into that really seamlessly, super crazy technical stuff. It was very difficult to do. Uh, and you could choose from different filters to make it totally unique. And maybe if you were really creative about it, whether you used your pets or your kids or just did something really silly, you might be on the idents for next week's X Factor. And X Factor goes on for like 16 weeks, and there's like 18 idents per thing. So it, and it was on Saturday and Sunday. So it's like 150 TV spots. You had a pretty good odds of being on TV if you were creative, which is quite cool. Um, and so we created this whole ecosystem, essentially, where you could create uh, these idents and star them. So they're user-generated vi video that's kind of mapped in using extremely complicated technology that, uh, that was all done server-side and then came back and gave you a broadcastable TV spot that you could share on the internet, you could share in social, but we could share also with us so that we could decide if we're going to post it. And uh, the results were, here are some example idents that kind of came from it. All of it's being user-generated. Could you be a TV star? Talk Talk TV sponsors The X Factor. 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 And then there's a couple million more. Uh, so pretty cool, pretty advanced technology. Basically what you did was you can go in and you could either look at a gallery or you could create a mix. To create a mix, you would first start and choose a track really quickly. It would give you a little preview. 
Uh, and then once you got your track that you liked, you pick the style that, of your performance that you put into. You could do the we paste, or this one was kind of a masking technique, so it would take your video, or when you do it with other people, it would kind of map that in and put it into letters. You could choose different symbols, you could put different words in there, you could customize it. Uh, this one was holograms, so it kind of mapped over this kind of mid-city industrial area that you could change the color schemes to. And you could even map yourself and your friends into this kind of 3D weird cube thing. That was quite cool. Um, all of it, really, then you, once you've selected that, you, this is me uh, a long time ago with, not, uh, a, with, with less of a beard, really. Um, and kind of, I don't know, do you guys like these glasses better than those? Yes? Yes? These are better glasses there. Not, not as good as last one. But um, so you just capture a video. It takes about 10 seconds. And then you can add yourself to that video. And you can add three different friends to it. And you could do that really quickly. And the cool thing was is that you could not only record your own friend just standing next to you and you do it again, and you're both in the video, but you could also do ones where your friends on Facebook could have done it, and you can grab their video without them knowing it. Or you can click nearby, and it would look at your geolocation, and anybody in the, and in the, within the area, you could just put them in. So you're putting neighbors that you don't even know in your community, putting them into a spot with you, and then posting it so maybe we put that on TV the next week. So this idea that you're in a music video with somebody in your community on television is just kind of an interesting way of looking at television which was quite cool. And a lot of people did that, and we kind of favored the ones that did that because it was a bit brave. Uh, so then you could look at a gallery. There was lovely stuff there. You could look and search nearby. But at the end of the day, I think it was very much about putting the ambition, this kind of ambition about how you look at that sponsorship, how you look at the show, you look at what people are wanting to watch. They're wanting to watch people giving fun, interesting performances that are quite exciting, giving them their moment of fame, and then giving them that opportunity too. Uh, and that was really what this was about, and that's how we feel like we kind of reinvented TV items in that. All right, that was good. That was one. I'm going to go a bit faster on this one. Are we good? Yeah? yeah? All right. Uh, the second one was um, from the same place, uh, the place that was not as good as McCann London, but still awesome. Um, and this is really about kind of reinventing storytelling. Uh, and it's specifically about Lexus. And Lexus uh, is an incredible, incredible brand. I mean, to be honest, in the last 15 years, they've really figured out what they're doing. And, uh, and they, they are extremely innovative in what they, and how they focus. Their design story is incredible. There's really clear features. They know, uh, and it's consistent, and they're rolling them out, and they're wonderfully crafted. Beautiful design. Uh, that work, the, the craftsmanship, and the stitching, and the details, and kind of jeweling things, it's just, it's just stunning stuff. And equally, their technology, not only just using really great tech, but they're using bamboo. And I mean, who uses bamboo? And bamboo is really good for things, I guess. It's really good to use bamboo, by the way. So use bamboo, because it's fun to say bamboo. Um, bamboo. All right. So uh, they've done really great. They've got really great technology, and they have a really brilliant design story. I mean, they're even making yachts all within this kind of same ecosystem of design. Really cool. Uh, and so it's a clear and genuine story that has a real problem. And that problem is, is that the sales and the perception within Europe specifically kind of sucked. And it wasn't good. And no matter how hard we tried, oh my god, we just kept on trying everything, just different ways of shooting and blah, blah, blah. We just needed, and we realized that, oh my god, everything we're doing is just showing a car going in the corner. So we needed to stop putting cars going around corners and stop cars turning and stop cars just kind of slowly sitting there, cars sitting in really awesome houses and sun in front of them, stop all that stuff. We needed to stop that. It needed to go away because it wasn't working. It just wasn't working. And that's just an interesting thing, by the way. If you, it's definition of insanity, right? If you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result, you're pretty much crazy or insane. Uh, so we needed to stop doing that because the other thing was is that it looks like everything else that everybody else is doing. If you think about any card press ad, it's basically some car going around in some weird blurry street or in the hills or something like that. So it really didn't stand out. And then you go, okay, well, you got this great story, but no one's finding out about it because it's the same thing. So we needed to essentially reinvent how we were going to tell that story, which was genuine and clear. Uh, and it needed to be about innovation. It was a story that was about technology and design and craftsmanship. And we needed to put it in motion because they're a car company. Things need to move when car, car, cars are about moving. Uh, so, 
And whatever that was, whatever that story was, it had to be something that no one could ignore. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it, right? We just continue to do the same thing. Uh, so we had an idea, uh, and this is how we started it. This is how we launched it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> how are we doing on audio, guys? Is that? Bear with me, guys. It's weird that it's not playing now. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Thank you. Oh shit. Yeah, I would over HDMI. Mm. You must check. <laughs> Can you hold that? Fucking <laughs> hell, man. Yeah. No wonder you dress like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the audio plays, so bear with me guys, because it's not fun to watch anything that doesn't have any audio. Um I mean, it's coming out of the Matrix switch, which sounds amazing. Uh, oh, come on. Well, what should we do? Why don't we imagine it for a moment and hope this doesn't happen on everything else? Uh, so, really amazing song happening right now. It's really intense. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Dun -dun 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 -dun. It's really, it's really interesting. Uh, but yeah, basically, this guy is on a skateboard, and then he walks up to um, a hoverboard. A real hoverboard, actually. And then, he, and then it's amazing, because then I'm like, right when you're gonna, gonna step out, the music stops and it goes to that, and it's incredible and it's super emotional. I'm gonna do one thing, because I'm not, it's gonna annoy me if it's like this the whole time. <laughs> That was better, wasn't it? Yeah, it's good. All right, so we created a hoverboard, really awesome. Um, and we called it Slide. Uh, and uh, I'm going to do, do a little film about it real quick just so you can see it. Oh, Chad, get it together.
talking about this new hoverboard. 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 Okay, I got a board. Super cool liquid nitrogen. It's a marketing slam dunk because people are actually interested in a hoverboard. If you're BMW or Mercedes Benz, right. what do you do now? Uh, rocket pack. Let's go right to the rocket <laughs>
This is Survival Billboard. Pretty nervous. I'm ready. The pain is only temporary. Glory lasts forever. You have the power. You can vote in survivalbillboard.com. And you voted for snow. This is the start of the true endurance ah! test. I'm getting so angry at this way! It's a bit sadistic, but I like it. Let us know what you're thinking. Keep chatting to us on Twitch. suffering from genuine fatigue at this point. I underestimated the challenge. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Goodness knows how they're managing it. I'm going to call it quits here. They have been up there for an incredible amount of time. Our contestants have been through the element. So I think although putting people on a billboard is quite cool, and I guess it's reinventing a billboard, um, there were some other things that were quite interesting about it also. One of them, my favorite was is that we recruited people. So the people that were up there were real people. One or two of them were influencers. But for the rest of them, influencers, I guess, are real people. Um, <laughs> some of our, some are evil, twisted demons. Um, uh, and we put out, we would recruit, we recruited people, and one of them ways was we put out ads around horrible, horrible uh, terms and conditions, basically really brilliantly written. So like you henceforth referred to as the entrant or fool holly entrant. I think there's really nice stuff. The challenge consists of standing on a ledge attached to the face of the survival billboard, a task which at first may appear simple but may soon become the physical ordeal compared to running an ultra marathon through the... Atacama Desert, whilst carrying three thin plastic shopping bags, the kinds with the handles that cut into your fingers, uh, filled with assortments of bricks and oddly shaped building rubble. So just really literally, this huge ad was really quite comical and funny. Uh, and we started to really have a tone of voice here. We asked people to do these weird mental quizzes online so they could submit themselves to see if they could get past it. And then we picked contestants, we trained them, we did um, a lot of content before that talks about their endurance and who they were as individuals. And then we broadcasted this thing. Uh, and we broadcasted it in so many different channels. My favorite, though, was we had a digital billboard uh, with a live version of a billboard on it, which was really weird, because it's kind of like one of those mirror images, a billboard promoting a billboard. Um, and, but I think the biggest innovation was this, and this is the part that was really about reinventing for me, is, is the broadcast idea, the idea about how can you connect the world to this one singular billboard. So that billboard still is a billboard, but it's a billboard in a completely different way. It's a billboard essentially for the internet. Uh, so the idea of broadcasting and having somebody talk over at the end of the t entire time and talk about, and we, can, we, you know, we had our people mic'd up, and having a conversation with everybody from Twitter to Twitch uh, and giving them the control to choose rain or snow, that idea and, and pummeling them, that idea was the thing that really made this reinventing a billboard, I think. Um, and yeah, it was great, and we pummeled them, and they really hated it, and for all these hours, just, just boom, 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 they were just getting hit. And I think that was fantastic. And it really, and by the way, time is a really great thing. If you put a clock on something, just in general, that will get a lot of demand. Um, but really, at the end of the day, I think the idea here is, is that it, was, it wasn't just a billboard, but it was about these people and our team completely paying attention to everything that people were engaging with, constantly feeding back to them, uh, and really just starting to create a connection with everybody that was paying attention to it. Um, and that, that connection was the thing that really made a difference. That connection was the reason why we had over a half a million people on Twitch alone in that 24-hour period of time do it. 
and that the average billboard time was eight seconds, and for survival billboard, it was eight minutes. Um, and of course, uh, having this many views, which is ridiculous in 22 hours, it came from that connection. It came from the idea, not just of putting people up there, but thinking about how that billboard lived in more than one place. And we're proud that we were the most advertised, we were the most awarded agency in the UK because of it, and we won lots of awards. But more importantly, and most importantly, it was the best sales ever for Tomb Raider, which is kind of good because we want to sell products too at the same time. Um, so well, I think what we learned here was that basically every channel can help one little local billboard reach the entire world, which is quite cool. And that, and that really is the idea of how you could reinvent a billboard. All right, last one. Good? Good? You, can, you don't have to lie to me. You can go, Shad, I'm really worried about how long you're going. No? Okay, good. I'm not. I I'm, I'm, should be smashing. I'm almost done. Um, right, last one. Again, from McCann London. Um, love these guys. Um, there they are again. They're awesome. That dude right there uh, with, the, with the, that shirt, his name's Alex Uber. He's the CEO. He kind of talks like this. He's like, you know, Chad, when you're going to go to that cactus thing over there in the Serbia, you know, make sure you're, you're, you're really funny. And so I don't know if I'm doing that yet. I mean, I thought that was kind of funny, but you don't know him, so I guess it's not funny to you. Um, so the last one is really about reinventing uh, e-commerce. Uh, and this is one of our most recent things, and it's quite cool. Um, it's for Xbox again, and it's really about uh, trying to, the brief was essentially to help create more awareness and more sales on their controller customization service called Design Lab. Uh, and Design Lab's really amazing. Um, it's weird. Well, let me go past this. There we go. Uh, so you can do loads of different color combinations, everything. It's incredible. I mean, the, and the detail of what they put into this was astonishing. And you could make your own controller and have it shipped to you on your own, which is quite cool. Um, so the brief was to promote that service. And it was really easy to do. And it created lots of brilliant little things. Uh, I like to call it uh, a crazy, sweet, super amazing, 8 million combo customization awesomeness experience otherwise known as Design Lab. Um, but the problem was is that uh, customization ain't really new. Uh, it's been happening for a long time. Nike ID smashes customization like 10 years ago. Uh, Coke lets you customize bottles. So that's kind of an issue because it, although it was really cool, it wasn't a really great story for anybody else because everybody knew that it happened. And, it, and the other problem was is that these bad boys were a bit more expensive than the ones you'd buy already, right? So not only is it something you kind of already know, but then you're going, okay, now we're going to spend, what, another 20, 30 pounds, dollars, whatever, uh, on this thing. Is that really worth it? And it was worth it. And a lot of people use this product, and it's great. And it's not that that money isn't worth paying for. But it was a hurdle for a lot of people, or enough people. Uh, so we uh, had a thought about, you know, what was the insight? And the insight really is, is that gamers have a real pride around the things that they create. They create worlds, they create characters, they earn things, they create outfits. The gamers, that whole world, which is a huge world of really passionate people, have a lot of pride in the things that they do. Um, that means when he walks up, that means uh, you need to get your shit together, Chad. Uh, almost done. So... Um, and so what we wanted to do was basically let gamers do more than kind of make their own controller. Uh, we wanted them to actually own the controller design. So you, if you made a specific controller, you named it, you could own that. And then with the ambition of possibly talking Microsoft and Xbox into letting them make some money off of that design to offset the cost. So they're literally part of the whole revenue share. Uh, and when they make their own design, they can sell it and they make some money off of it. Um, and this is uh, what we did. It's customization is, it is optional. It's always a premium. It comes at a price. Yeah. The 
more people that buy my design, the more money I make. I got more than half of what I paid for it. I actually earned over $1,000. With this uh, new feature, I can name and claim my design. Now that design belongs to me, anyone can buy it. I figured a lot of people would be into Despicable Me and the Minions. I'm German, but Brazil has a much bigger fan base. Trump's smart, a good businessman, straight talker, tells you the truth, tells you how it is. He looks like a Cheeto. <laughs> the controller I designed was a breast cancer awareness controller. I wanted to join the fight for marriage equality in Australia. I want to try to make money off this thing. Make something that was empowering. Unicorns. Black Lives Matter. Okay. The Pope. Atheists. Not believe Bitcoin. 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 Hashtag me too. Did Twitter a lot. I did social media on YouTube. So the franchise model was uh, really about designing, promoting, and earning that. And I think the promotion thing, by the way, was one of the, th the most incredible things I've seen um, done by McCann's design group. I mean, this, the design and the ads that we created for, for people's designs to promote them were unbelievably incredible. Each one of them are based off of an inspiration that they, dic they wrote in the descriptions, and then we kind of recreated the design around them, around this very simple pattern. And from mall Santa color schemes to extraterrestrial to the samurai, uh, Thanksgiving lunch, Thanksgiving lunch is actually really funny, um, and, and to so many different, di different kind of styles to it. It's just incredible really how people interpreted this platform. Um, I'll skip this because we're running out of time, but we did also just TV commercials for them. But essentially, at the end of the day, this was about changing the definition of ownership uh, and, and reinventing commerce. Uh, and I think that was kind of the last thing. So that was Design Lab. So uh, one final thing I need to do real quick because you guys are awesome. It's a bit of a favor. Um, because I love my things. I want you to just say hello to Miles and L real quick, if you can do it in real quick. One, two, three. Hello, Miles and L. Oh, come on, louder than that. One more time. Oh, there, look at that. Look at that guy. He's drunk, babe. Trust me, don't trust him. Um, so, yeah, we made it through that. Thank you for that, guys. Reinvent, you can do anything. I have to leave the final message, I'm sorry, though. Even though I don't really know any of you, I think it's really important for you to know that each one of you are amazing. Um, and uh, I love you, and thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.